Hello and welcome back to the channel. As you can see here, we are about to start up our run through here of Star Ruler 2 again. I've had a few interesting encounters with it the last time. A number of the actual derelicts we found were actually ones I've not encountered previously. So that was interesting. Uh, I do want to make a couple comments here. Uh, one thing we're going to take a look at real quick. Pause it. Is the uh, ship design. This is something I haven't touched on really much at all. And that's frankly because it is the one part of the game I'm still more or less struggling with. As you saw with the heavy carrier, I increased the size and then added armor plating onto it. Now, this has been an effective strategy for me in all the games I've played so far with the heavy carrier design. More effective than when I've tried to make ships from scratch. So I've been going with that basically because it is effective. Uh, the ship size is really a crucial matter. It helps determine the amount of items you can actually have on the ship, the amount of damage it can take, the amount of damage it can dish out. So for example, we take a look here, damage a second is 128 right now, so we increase that to 300. That's 192. So as you see, it just increases all the stats based on the size. And of course, there's also the ship type as well. Uh, flagships are the ones that the uh, fleets are built around. So your support ships will be added onto your flagship. Of course, a station is a station. And the support ship is your little support ships that get added into the fleet. And you can even customize the default ones, and that will generate those automatically. I believe in theory that your defense, which is the stat that automatically generates ships, or when you rather buy and purchase them, uh, but anyways, uh, the defense option here will also generate support ships that are of a custom design as long as you've designed it and put it into the actual game. So that, in theory, means that you can make your own fleets and the game will automatically start to produce those while you have to purchase them constantly. And that's why defense comes in really handy when you're doing more of a uh, aggressive stance, or just in having your actual defense, of course, is that it is basically free ship production without having to spend any of your regular budget. Now, back to the design here, uh, I usually coat it up with armor as you've seen and as you can see here, just to uh, flesh it out a bit more, it adds a lot more health with the uh, armor plating. Let's go to the defense section here. The plate armor, obviously, as it says right there, tells you the pros and cons of each one. Uh, the high health is a real advantage. That health makes a huge difference. And the uh, blade of armor I use sparingly because direction matters in combat. If you're getting hit from the... Um, starboard side here, you're going to take damage along these plates first, then it'll get you into your supply, your reactors, and so on. If you're getting hit from the rear, you're going to take damage along these plates, and then into your engine blocks as well. And of course, once the system is fully damaged, it's no longer functioning, so that particular system is down for the fight until it gets repaired. There is a repair rate, so you can get a repair during the fight, of course, automatically. Uh, the issues I've had with the designer is I did a ship design, custom ship design, a while back. That was basically uh, missiles which don't require a facing, and then they had like two points of access for each missile, just like you have here, basically, where there's just enough for it to actually fire and be effective. And it was heavily coated with about three layers of armor, pretty much all around, except for where the thrusters had to be sticking out just like the missiles and I figured that design would work pretty good to uh, get through most anything it was the same size as uh, well, the 200 size is what I usually go with for flagships until I get later game but uh, it was the same size as other ships of uh, flagships of course and it basically just got chewed through in a heartbeat it really just did not survive at all, which was very interesting because I figured with the heavy armor plating all around that would really make a difference, but the overall health has a more impact, more of an impact rather, than the actual placement of your plates. Now your uh, resistance plates, those matter more as to where on the ship they are placed. The health plates just matter to how many you have and where, or not where, but uh, how many you have and of course uh, the health that it gives you. Now you will see that they do have some damage resistance to them, it's very marginal, it's basically half what the Blade of Armor is. So there is some advantage to that, but it, it's basically, if you're worried about the damage resistance, you're going to want to put that Blade of Armor on, and then of course the health armor is going to be just to get your overall HP level up. 
Now, there's uh, reactive armor, which I did not put on this design. And as it implies, of course, basically it's armor that gets used up by uh, mitigating heavy damage. So those large weapons, when they're coming in and they're hitting you to head on, and you hit, put your reactive armor, say, up in the front area here. And that way, those, those rounds will hit the reactive armor, it'll detonate it, and then it'll take care of all that excess damage instead of getting punched into the next layer and so on. Uh, there's other armor I have not unlocked in this playthrough yet that is just overall more effective and later in, later game armor that you can actually get either from researching the normal way or from the um, Debris fields. And that will of course give you a huge advantage in being able to take on enemy ships. And of course while we're on the subject of the design, uh, your thrusters and your missile launchers, they can work with just one or two points of access. You don't need to leave them overexposed, like this doesn't need to be exposed here. And of course, only one of these actually need to be exposed for the thruster to work. But, you have facing weapons as well, and that's what that radio shows us there. We use our middle mouse key and we can adjust its actual facing. So when you're setting up your ships and you're modifying your ships, like you see that there? It decreases the uh, upper side facing, but no increase in the other one because these armor blocks are blocking it from getting the extra arc that way. So we want to balance it out to a certain point where it's going to have just enough facing in all directions, or get as much of its facing around in different directions rather as we can. And of course, uh, you're going to have to pay attention to your facings and your weapons. Uh, these, ex uh, these other blocks here are the same laser weapon. What happens with the weapons and the engines, as you can see, is you'll place the first block. So we'll go ahead and just do a quick new design. So your crew, you place your first block, and your surrounding blocks there. Your ammo storage is going to be very basic. Nothing really anything to worry about. All right, so we're going to go down to uh, weapons. Want get in here. All right, so we place our first one, and that's where our actual turret is. So when we go to place these other ones, they're going to be blocking the turret. So we just hold on our left click, move that turret over, and now it's over here. But these are all connected. They are all the same actual gun. Each one gives the same stat bonus. So this, we take this tile off and say we place it over here. The same exact stats are added as if it was still connected here. It doesn't change your DPS, your damage, and whatnot. It just changes the number of actual guns firing you have. So, two approaches you can go for that. You can do like we did with the heavy carrier by default, of course, was to uh, expand it out to make your single gun very powerful. And that's great because that means that that gun gets all kinds of damage bonus. Or, you know, like see right here is 0.09 DPS on that one and the 1.71 on that. So that means when he fires this gun and it hits a target, it's going to do a heck of a lot more damage. Or if it misses, you're wasting all of this off of that one gun. So you can break it up into multiple guns rather than just having one large gun and just gambling on the chance that it's going to hit everything. Or another way you can do it is you can just do several smaller guns. Really. You see how they will not connect once you set them up like that? So we have three guns here that are all at 0.27 DPS. So that's uh, three shots. Of course, that does in mean, obviously, that if all three of those guns fire and two of them miss, that you're only getting a third of the DPS you'd have with the one gun fire with the same amount of tiles and hitting. But that's kind of the drawback pros and cons. Uh, obviously, I would have to say that the more actual cannonry you have, the more actual weapon mount like this you have, you will have an easier chance at defeating fleets versus having a large block section here connected to one gun, which is an easier chance of defeating a flagship. Of course, there's a difference there, because obviously if you defeat the flagship, you defeat the fleet, because the fleet will die off. But the fleet will still fight as long as you're within range. So you can kill an enemy flagship, and then the fleet will still kill you. So it's, it's hit or miss. It depends on really what you want to go for. And of course, uh, getting more shots on downrange and on target tends in most situations to uh, make all the difference. Uh, that pretty much covers uh, the gist of the designs here. 
Let's see. Uh, modifiers that will tell you the pros and cons and what you can use it on, obviously with the bulkhead one. If we go back and we go to the heavy carrier again. We'll go to the bulkhead and we want to throw this on here. So that engine becomes even more powerful, or we can take it away. And vice versa for any of these others, rather. Any of the ones that you can expand the tile system on. Alright, uh, pretty much covers what I wanted to go over with the uh, ship designer. Of course, once I get a bit more familiar with it, we'll go over it again in depth. Uh, just trying to give you the basic tips and suggestions on how to use it here and general idea of it. So I hope that was helpful or inspirational in some way. And of course, as always, have a good day.